All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Illustration Masterclass. Uh, today, I'm going to be looking at the art of uh, Gary Kelly. And um, not a typical artist that is that I look at on this channel. He doesn't do concept art uh, for games or anything like that. But I like to look at a bunch of different artists, take inspirations from different people. And, uh, you know, I'm an artist, you know, I'm not... I'm not somebody who's interested in just being pigeonholed into one way of doing things or one way of looking at things. And that's that's part of what this channel is about. Like, um, if you're coming to this channel and expecting something that's uh, super polished and commercialized and I know exactly what it is that I'm doing with this channel, then this probably isn't the channel for you. I'm just exploring things and sharing things that I like. And uh, so let's get into it. So this guy was a painter, obviously. And uh, I really like the way that he paints. And I think there's so many different design decisions it is that you can pull from his work um, because he's not super over-rendered, right? Like he's, he's pretty loose with what it is that he does with some of his representations, you know, like even, and, and I think that's really creative and it's really brave, right? So like even this green over here, like you can see it almost feels like it, it just covers the area, right? He just kind of has this green that just kind of covers the whole area. And it's interesting that, that we have this green here. And then we have this green here. Right? So there's a pattern going on here. Um, now, there's even more patterns going on. Uh, in the shadows, in the way he lays out the shadows, right? Um, these are all different compositional elements, so I guess you would say this is a composition tutorial, right? And this is the way it is that I learn, is that I, I look at where it is that all these different things are converging, right? And I'm, right now I'm drawing these lines over here that in my mind are converging onto where he wants us to look. Right? Where is our focal point? Our focal point is here. And you can see from all these different converging lines, and by converging lines I mean you have these different lines and these different shapes that all kind of subtly move and point in the same direction, right? So if if this is if this is where our focal point is, then he has a bunch of different elements that are pointing us in that direction. And he has different other things in the environment that are kind of uh, helping to push our eye there, right? So like we have this big green shape that goes here, this is a bunch of smaller green shapes. And then we see that green, that small green shape repeated again here in her hand, right? Uh, so this is a way of organizing it because again, it's, it's all about organization. It's not about, um, you know, like this green down here that's in this, this is an absinthe bottle, by the way. This was a thing that artists used to do. They used to drink absinthe, and it, and it made them fucking crazy. Um, and this is a little sugar cube that they would pour the absinthe on. And uh, it's a drug that apparently it, it helps you be creative, but it, it also like completely destroys your liver. <laughs> There's a lot of like artists, artist artists, you know, from Picasso's area that would drink this sort of stuff in order to uh, enlighten them. So or give them ideas, I guess, or put them in the right state of mind. I don't, I don't really think it gave them ideas. Um, but yeah, you can see that even here, he's very selective with the way it is that he draws these shapes. And it creates an interesting look to it. Right? Because even when you look across this face right here, the shapes are very interesting. The way it is that they're they're decided right from the very get go, right? There's not a lot of like blending between these different things. Like each plane, each turn of the plane on the face is kind of flatly done, and it gives it a sense of design, right? So I'll take the I'll take the lines off again, and you'll see what I'm saying. Like look at her face. Look at the way it is that the shadow cuts across her neck. Uh, you can look at the way it is the, the leg is here. 
You know, it's not about representing something. It's not about representing reality. And obviously, the greenness of her uh, is related to the absinthe bottle, which I, I believe absinthe was called the green goddess or something along those lines. So that might, so this woman might metaphorically be that. It almost looks like she's on some sort of a magic carpet or something. You know, her, her pants are purple. Um, and so her, her underwear or whatever this is. Um, and so we get this sense that that she's, uh, you know, maybe she's a genie or something. She's almost like a genie that came out of the absinthe, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I just love images like this that are, that are okay with being um, not what you would consider to be perfect, right? Uh, but essentially what he's doing is he's, he's grouping like shapes and like colors together. Right, like this shirt and this background are blending into the same thing. And so is this shadow. All right, so you could draw these shapes individually. And this is something it is that you can do even when you're just doing like life studies or something like that is instead of drawing the the figure like you know you you're you're looking at let's say you're looking at a I'm just going to draw something real quick you know you're looking at a figure you're looking at you're looking at a figure and maybe you know you're this is you. You're standing in front of the easel and you're drawing. You're drawing this dude standing here, right? He's got his hands on his hips. He's looking super confident and you're drawing him and it ain't working out. Uh, part of the reason might be is because you're trying to draw what you see as the concept of a figure in your mind, right? You're drawing the on this and you're, you're doing all of this stuff. This is all concept, right? Joints, the joints. And, and sometimes it, we're, we, we don't understand how to get past this part of drawing. And part of that reason is, is because you're not drawing the light shapes, right? When you look at this guy, he's drawing the light and the shadow shapes. And he's grouping them together. It's almost like a low resolution image in a sense. And so you can try doing that instead of copying a, a pose in a skeletal way, like an anatomical way, just think about it in terms of shapes of light and color. That's, that's why his stuff looks the way it is that it does. Everything is grouped together. Look at all of the, all of the black in this image and look at the way it is that it creates these shapes, right? I mean, these shapes are, they, they're almost like their own individual section. It's just repeated throughout the whole thing, right? I mean, look, look at this shape. This was 100% something he was thinking about before he did it. Right? And even this goes up here and it connects here. And this connects here. All right, same thing. All right, you remove the image and just that top part right there. You start dropping in. I mean, this is a useful, this is a useful way of thinking about it, right? You can start to see the shapes there. You can start to see the creative decisions that he's making and the way it is that that reads, you know? So when you look at your own piece, if your own piece looks disjointed, you know, if I, if I didn't connect these things and I just started to break these up randomly, 
which is what a lot of beginner artists do, right? Just break up things, like no kind of mean, like no kind of rhyme or reason to it. Look how disjointed that looks, right? It looks so disjointed compared to the way it looked a moment ago, right? All right, I got one or two more, and then we'll go ahead and close it out. Again, it's you know, like his stuff is very, it's very abstract. Like even with the way he represents foreground, midground, uh, background, you know, he's obviously putting these uh, darker shapes back here, right? Obviously. Right. Everything is a very deliberate, deliberate shape. I love the way he did this. The way he's got this character facing this way. Right. Really awesome, awesome work. Yeah, if I had more time, I'd go more in depth in some of these. I oh, love this image. This image is just so cool. It's just such a vibe. Um, just the way he organizes the different the different figures, right? So again, you know, you have this kind of like subtle way in which your eye is being led, right? So you could say, I mean, obviously the focal point is really just what all these characters are doing, but he's grouping them together in a way where they kind of overlap, right? You have this character here, you have this character here, you have this guy here, this guy here, right? It's interesting that he, he has this guy looking up towards this figure this guy looking down, uh, we don't really see her eyes. We see his eyes. He's looking at this conversation going on. We kind of see his eyes. Her eyes are hidden from us. This person's eyes, we can see, but they're kind of not fully seeable, right? Uh, these are all design decisions, you know? Like if we, th if we think if this head was turned this way and facing us, um, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be as easily uh, recognized. It wouldn't be as easily uh, organized, right? Because it wouldn't really make any sense. I mean, for one thing, he needs to be talking to this group of people. There's obviously a conversation going on here. Um, but outside of that, uh, it would also break the rhythm of the way that these heads are slanted. That even the heads are slanted a certain way. This is slanted this way. This is slanted that way. Uh, then she's slanted the other way. He's slanted this way, he's slanted the other way, slanted like that, and he's tilted to the side as well. Uh, so just in the way it is that he organizes these shapes, you know, we have this kind of like, it, it's, it's like a pattern, right? It's like a pattern and he's, he's setting a pattern and then he's breaking the pattern. He's going like lean to the left, lean to the right, lean to the left. You could say this is leaning to the right, lean to the left. Maybe that's not that apparent, but it becomes apparent if you look at the ellipses of the bottles, right? You have right, left, left, and then you could say this is another left, but he breaks it, right? Because you have these square shapes, square shapes, and then, oh, he breaks it because he takes that away. You see the same square shape here. He's, he's breaking it because we see a bunch of circles within this big square shape. And then he's, he's really, Simplifying things in the background, right? It's just got some simple shapes going on back here. Very, very awesome stuff. All right. Look at another one. Yeah, like I said, like I love the way it is that he. Oops, my computer is has a mind of its own sometimes and it likes to zoom in like that. Um, so yeah, like I said, you know, I love the way it is that he. He's non-literal about everything it is that he does. Um, you know, he's he's the complete opposite of the way it is that most of us illustrators work, which is that you know we go into art station, we look at art station, and we say, <clears throat> I need to be able to draw like 
Anthony Jones or something. Um, he doesn't have, he's obviously doing traditional, it seems like to me, but he's not being precious about anything it is that he's doing. He's just being expressive with what it is that he's doing, right? And he does such a good job of like taking these shapes and breaking them down into almost iconic 2D shapes, right? Yeah. And it's interesting that this kind of creates kind of a canopy around these two. And this hand also points us back here, right? Again, like I said, like look at the yellow in the in the guitar here. It extends past the line art, right? The hand feels more symbolic. The head feels more symbolic here. Same thing with the drums, not being literal at all. And his shape is very much like a it's like a triangle type shape, right? With his hands coming out, and she's cut against this red background uh, and we can just see that you know she has a very voluptuous body obviously and the lines of the woman behind her they complement her and point us down to her all right guys that's it that's all i got today um i'm going to continue to do these every week so feel free to jump in and um let me know if there's an artist it is that you would like for me to look at uh, in the future and I'll, I'll add them to my list uh, otherwise if there's anything else uh, feel free to subscribe let me know in the comments what you think and take it easy